I'm Rod Carter with WFLA News Channel 8. It is my pleasure to be Master of Ceremonies for the 30th Annual City of Tampa Black History Celebration. And I'm honored to have been the MC for many, many years. It's my pleasure to be here once again with you. We are excited to have everyone here to celebrate with us the 30 years of commitment and dedication from city employees, current and retired. In 1988, the Director of Community Affairs, Mr. Bobby L. Bowden, wanted the city of Tampa to have the first culturally diverse celebration for their employees and then Mayor Sandra Freeman. She agreed and the city of Tampa Black History Program began to an audience of roughly 50 employees and look how much we have grown. This morning, we continue with Mr. Bowden's vision to celebrate our African-American history and our culture. And at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to stand as Pastor Moses Brown from Feed Our Children Ministries comes to the podium to deliver the invocation. And immediately following that, we will uh, remain standing as P.R. Alsent, a young man who's a senior from Hillsborough High School and a member of Men of Vision, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the singing of the national anthem led by Ms. Paulette Upshaw-Wells. So we bow our heads. As we look in the back out of time, we want to say, Lord, we thank you for strength. When others took our kindness as weakness, when they took our silence as speechless, thank you for strength. When they considered our uniqueness strange and called our language slang, thank you for strength. When they minimized our confidence as conceit and maximized our mistakes as defeat, thank you for strength. They assume that those of us who live in low rental, that our intelligence is just potential. Thank you for strength. My advancements was somehow unfair. My praise was preferential treatment. The voice concern for an offensive statue was discontentment. Thank you for strength. As we look upon the horizon, thank you for strength of our mayor, Bob Horkorn. Bob Uphorn, who never backed down. Thank you for the strength of each of our community leaders who found direction in their rejection. Thank you for the strength in every zip code that links our community together and makes us one incredible force of empowerment. For we believe that the reason you put more on us is because you see more in us. Thank you for the strength and thank you for the strength provider. This we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the
And uh, if you would, please have a seat. Thank you. And please welcome uh, Ms. Celeste Gibbons, who is going to bring us our greeting and welcome for today. Good morning, good morning. I just want to welcome you. My name is Celeste Gibbons Peoples. I am the president of the City of Tampa's Black History Committee. And um, to the Honorable Mayor Bob Buckhorn, City Council, members, officials, administrators, employees, sponsors, and friends. I'm elated to stand before you as the City of Tampa's Black History Co Co Committee, excuse me, Incorporated, celebrates 30 years of dedication, commitment to our community, our youth, and our history. C uh, COTBHC, kind of shorten that a little bit, has celebrated the history of Central Avenue, the heroes and sheroes of our community, sports and music legends. We've supported black businesses and for the past 19 years supported youth and young adults with our scholarship programs by awarding approximately over $185,000 to high school seniors, as well as students already on the path to higher education. Our keynote speakers have been college university professors, presidents, Tuskegee Airmen, professional athletes, astronauts, and we've even had an Emmy-nominated actor, Mr. Danny Glover. Because of the continued support from the City of Tampa's administration, our sponsors, community, partnerships, and most importantly, the employees and volunteers of COTBHC will continue to move forward. So I want to just thank you and sit back and enjoy the rest of the program. Let's give her another round of applause, Fuji. you? I probably tell too much, so I apologize, but I totally skipped over her part of the program. She was like, hey. <laughs> so she's keeping me together up here. We also want to thank Ms. Upshaw. She is continuing a legacy of singing the tributes and today's rendition of the national anthem uh, to her sisters, Eloise and Sheila Upshaw. Let's give her another round of applause as well. And, and I can't go without saying another uh, special thank you to Pierre. You know, when I met Pierre, he was actually, I think, in middle school, and he had the same voice. <laughs> and I was like, what did I do wrong that I couldn't get that Barry White sound? But thank you so much. And this young man is everywhere as our men of vision, and we're very, very proud of them. I told him today, <laughs> I see more stuff on Twitter that they do, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, can we all have uh, all of our elected officials who are here, please stand and be recognized as well. If you would just stand, all elected officials who are in the house. And I certainly want to acknowledge all of our future leaders as well. So when I call out your school or organization, let us know where you are just by standing up. Legacy, uh, Legacy Preparatory Academy. Mr. Ross Anderson and Mita Vision. Pierre waved like he was running for office, don't he? I love it. All right, Memorial Middle School. <laughs> Sam Rampello Downtown Partnership School. <laughs> and Bible Truth Ministries. <laughs> Let's give all of these young people another round of applause. It's, it's important that you are here. We'd also like to say a special thank you to the Mayor's Hispanic Heritage Committee and the Mayor's African American Advisory Council, of course, for their continued support as well. At this time, if you would, focus your attention on the screen here to my left, your right, for a... This year's Black History Month sheds an important light on the role that African Americans have played and continue to play in our national security. Thank you for taking your time today to celebrate the achievement of African Americans and to honor these brave men and women who have served in our nation's military. They're real heroes. We owe them a lot. Like Dr. King, the Tuskegee Airmen, and NASA's Charlie Bolden, 
They've served as role models for so many. We've seen great African-American leaders, public servants, activists, war heroes dedicate their lives to making our society more equal, more just, more inclusive. Now, there's a long way to go. For example, we're going to have an opportunity this year. The people of Florida vote on a constitutional amendment to restore voting rights for those who have served their time. I believe this is an important step, and when it comes to fairness, it's just simply the right thing to do. So to all those who to continue to work every day to improve your community, you do so much to move the nation forward. I just want to say thank you. I want to encourage you. Thank you, and God bless you. After a long history of service to the city of Tampa, Bob Buckhorn was elected the 58th mayor of the city of Tampa. 50, I don't know, why are you smiling, mayor? Officially sworn in in the office on April 1st, 2011, Mayor Buckhorn has kept his focus on the economic leadership, on the stability and the business opportunities in the Tampa Bay area. Under the mayor's uh, uh, tenure, Tampa has become one of the nation's largest city, uh, cities and the third largest city in the state of Florida. And we applaud Mayor Buckhorn and his administration for their continued support of the city of Tampa's Black History Committee and the continued efforts of the employees who work very, very tirelessly to make sure that the city of Tampa employees and the community as a whole have a Black History celebration and various other community events that are presented year-round. So please welcome Mayor Bob Buckhorn as he brings greetings. Before I do that, it's been an uh, interesting year for us. We have survived with the world watching a potentially catastrophic hurricane. We survived a serial killer in Seminole Heights. And I will tell you that but for the city employees, many of whom who are here today, we would not have gotten through that as well as we did. And so I want you young people to see who it is that gets up every day to do the work that really matters in this community. The men and women who wear the badge oftentimes get the recognition but it is the men and women that work hard every day from dawn to dusk that make a difference. They don't ask to be thanked. You rarely see them on TV. Uh, but without them, this city would not function. So with all the Tampa City employees, not our sworn personnel, we're going to get to them in a second, with all of our employees that are here today wearing the uniforms of blue and green and orange, would you stand up for a second so these young people can see you? Young people, these are the ones that make it happen. They make those of us who are the eye candy look good. Thank you, guys. Um, let me introduce a friend real quick who wanted to stop by and say just a few words to all of us. Uh, she is our voice in Washington, D.C., along with Senator Nelson, who you heard from. Uh, she is a Tampa girl. She's a proud product of Chamberlain High School. Uh, she is a friend of mine and has been for many, many years. Uh, but more importantly, she is our voice in Washington, D.C., uh, fighting the good fight every day. And as we all know, there's a fight going on in Washington, D.C. Congresswoman Kathy Castor. Well, good morning. Good morning. And thank you, Mayor Buckhorn. I, Mayor Buckhorn, I am so happy to be uh, home from Washington, D.C. Uh, today and to be home here in the city of Tampa because it gives me an opportunity to thank all of you for your service to our neighbors and for making the city of Tampa what it is, an accepting, progressive community that believes that we're all created equal and everyone deserves an equal opportunity. Uh, 
I want to thank Celeste Gibbons Peoples and the whole Black History uh, Committee, uh, Bobby Bowden especial, uh, especially, uh, and I look forward to hearing Fred Hearns. But I want to say to Mayor Buckhorn, thank you for being such a, a strong leader for the city. One thing that you did not mention, Mayor, is that you were a stalwart when there was a little uh, controversy over whether or not we should have a Confederate statue mm -hmm. in front of the, the courthouse. You said, of course, it's time to bring that statue down because it doesn't stand for what this community stands for. So thank you for your steadfast leadership on that. It is so right that what this committee is doing to uh, reflect on the past, the challenges that we have overcome, and to focus on the future, because we still have work to do. Yes, many challenges at the national level with what's happening in Washington, D.C. That's why it's so important uh, that the Black History Committee and all of us here in the city of Tampa support our students. I think this is one of our great challenges ahead, to make sure that every child, no matter their zip code, gets the highest quality education. Our teachers are not valued as they should be, and we've got to do more for our schools so that we can lift this community to a higher level. I think we've all... This, area, this whole region is known for having a lower wages in other parts of the country. We've got to be brave enough to ask for higher wages and recruit companies here that will pay a living wage. And this is another challenge facing us in the coming years. The other is something that Senator Nelson mentioned in his video that I want to make sure it's clear to everyone. Uh, we have an opportunity this November on the ballot to make sure that people who are nonviolent offenders who have paid their debt to society get their civil rights restored. You know, just late yesterday afternoon, a federal district court uh, in South Florida said that Florida, what Florida's governor and cabinet is doing now with their, their very slow restoration of civil rights for nonviolent offenders is unconstitutional, and they threw it out. So it has to be fixed anyways. But we've got to raise our voices to ensure Florida's not left behind. We're the only state in the country that clings to this old Jim Crow law that says if you uh, served your time, you can't give your civil rights back unless you're blessed by by the governor. This has got to change, and I encourage you, wait and work and work for November uh, so that we can make sure that everyone has equal opportunity in this community. I want to add one other little thing. I want to invite you to my Black History Month celebration. You're going to know some of these hometown heroes that we are going to recognize. Jolie Cooper Nelson, the national president of, the, of Jack and Jill America, Inc. And I bet there are uh, some AKAs and some Deltas in the house because we are also going to recognize Carolyn House Stewart, the immediate past president of AKA, and Dr. Paulette Walker, the immediate past president of Delta Sigma Theta. We're going to do this at the Robert Saunders Library. Fred, on uh, Wednesday, February 21st at 10 a.m. Please come out and join us as we lift these hometown heroes. Thank you, City of Tampa, for everything that you do. Thank you, Congresswoman Castor, for uh, all that you do, and thank you for always taking the time to be here. Um, she's absolutely right. This is an interesting time in our country. This is a time that requires that men and women of faith and of strength and of fortitude and of character raise their voices in the face of the rhetoric we hear at the national level. What I love about this city is this is a city that builds bridges, not walls. This is a city that recognizes the inherent goodness of everybody and values that regardless of how you got here and the language that you speak or the color of your skin. This is a city that is a beacon of hope, a shining example of what tolerance and diversity and recognizing the inherent goodness in each and every one of us means. In these difficult times, when the leadership in our nation's capital would divide us rather than elevate us, would demonize certain groups as opposed to empowering them. Leadership that 
speaks of chain migration. The only folks that I know who came here in chains are our African American fathers and mothers and grandfathers and great grandmothers. It's time that we stand up in the face of that coarseness and that harshness and say, not on my watch, not now, not ever. And for these young people here, I want you to know that you live in a city that cares about you, that treasures you, that honors you. We all may not look alike. We all may not come from the same place. We may all may not be of the same means, but we are all Campanians, and we are forever stronger and better because of that diversity. Do not ever let anybody divide us, not in grade school, not in middle school, not in high school, not after school, not now, not ever. You are Tampanians. Be proud of that. Represent the 813. <laughs> and let in our life and let in our walk, Tampa be the example for the rest of the world. You got it? Got it. Amen? Amen. All right, now we're going to pass the hat. <laughs> CC. Now, therefore, I, Bob Buckhorn, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tampa, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2018 as Black History Month in the city of Tampa and urge all of our citizens to join me in participating in the various events and celebrations that honor this annual tradition. We do this so we don't repeat the past. Congratulations, Cece. Thank you again, Congresswoman Castor, Mayor Buckhorn, for your continuous support of the Tampa uh, rich African-American history and culture. And please, let's give them another round of applause for being here. Thank you so much. In partnership with the mayor, the Tampa City Council is the legislative branch of city government, very responsible for enacting ordinances and resolutions that the mayor then administers as the chief executive officer. And the chair pro tem of the city council, council member Harry Cohen, a Tampa native, represents District 4. So let's welcome council member Harry Cohen as he brings greetings on behalf of the city Tampa council. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, great pleasure to be here this morning uh, on behalf of the Tampa City Council to bring you greetings. Before I start, I would like to make sure to acknowledge my colleagues that are here this morning. Councilman Mike Suarez from District 1. <laughs> Councilman Frank Reddick from District 5. <laughs> and Councilman Luis Vieira from District 7. One of our uh, morning's themes is education, and it's really gratifying to see our school board member, Ms. Schamberger, here with us today as well, and we want to make sure to welcome her. Today truly is a celebration of the accomplishments and contributions of everyone who has been involved in the committee since Bobby Bowden and a group of city employees founded it in 1988. Since that day, it has grown in both participation and mission by investing in students in our community by awarding scholarships. It is as much about the future as it is about the past. And in, in line with what Congresswoman Castor and Mayor Buckhorn said, you are our future, you are our city's future, and we expect very great things from you, and we expect you to make the next bit of history in the city in the years ahead. So, 
On the 30th anniversary of this group, after celebrating its accomplishments over the years, it might make sense to change the name of the Black History Committee to the Black Making History Committee, because that's what we're going to see you do in the years to come. <laughs> to the current and retired city employees here today, on behalf of the City Council, I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your dedication and hard work on behalf of our community. It cannot be said enough how much we appreciate your hard work each and every day. I also want to remark that it is indeed an honor to participate in today's program featuring my friend Fred Hearns. I know that his presentation will help us focus on why we are here and inspire us to harness our energies to go out and do good things for our community. Again, to the Black History Committee, congratulations on 30 years and thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you, Councilman Cohen. So coming to the stage today, we're in for a treat. It's a 16-year-old singer and songwriter. His name is James Cole, and he attends Howard W. Blake High School of the Performing Arts, and uh, he studies both piano and guitar. So this is a, a cool young man. He writes his own music, and he aspires to be a uh, well-known singer and a writer for other artists as well. So he taught himself to play the piano and the guitar by watching YouTube. <laughs> I love that. So let's welcome James. Testing. Testing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Does everything sound good? Yeah. So this is an original song um, called Ethereal. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it means something that is so light and delicate that it seems that it's too perfect for this world. All of us is serious. 
I'm going out on a limb. Y'all better remember this young man. That's talent. I'm going to call you the new and improved John Legend. Because uh, <laughs> that was good. Seriously, wonderful job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, we are at the time in our program where we're going to have our keynote speaker. And uh, the introduction of our keynote speaker is by someone who knows him very well and who is the founder and the first chair of the City of Tampa Black History Committee, Mr. Bobby L. Bowden. Mr. Bowden is a retired director of community affairs for the City of Tampa. So please, let's welcome him now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> I cannot hit not one note of music, <laughs> not musically inclined, but that young man is going places. He will be going places, yes. Black America, black history is American history because the two are inseparable. Black history is a very rich history that has contributed immensely to the diversity and growth of this nation. It is an honor and a pleasure to introduce the speaker for the 30th anniversary of the City of Tampa's Black History Program. The speaker and I are former colleagues. We worked in the same city department, community affairs, and enjoyed a very good, solid relationship during our tenure. During his outstanding career with the city, he served on the Black History Advisory Committee and eventually served as the advisor. What I admire about our speaker is he has always exhibited a very good vision, deep compassion, and appreciation for this community's potential. I'm very proud of his accomplishments and love for this community during his tenure with the city and in retirement. He retired from city government, but not from working on behalf of this community. Our speaker was born in the Bronx, New York, and grew up in the East Tampa neighborhood of Belmont Heights. He attended the local public schools and graduated from George S. Middleton High School with the class of 1966. He earned a BA degree in English journalism from the University of South Florida and later received a master's degree from USF in Africana Studies. He also attended Springfield College and earned a master's degree in organizational management and leadership and was named the school's distinguished graduate student. He began his professional career as a newspaper journalist with the Florida Sentinel Bulletin, St. Petersburg Times, Tampa Tribune, and the Fort Lauderdale Sun Sentinel. He was a sports information director for Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, before returning to Florida and working for the city of Tampa in the Office of Community Relations. During his career with the city, because of his compassion and dedication to African-American history and art. He proposed and led the effort to paint a historical mural on the east wall of the Kit Mason Recreation Center. 
That wall highlights some of the former prominent black merchants on historic Central Avenue. Following a 32-year career with the city, he retired in 2007 as the director of the Department of Community Affairs. His love for the history of this community led him to establish the Tampa Bay History Tours. And in 2007, he began leading bus tours of the city's most historic neighborhoods. In July 2017, his company celebrated its 10th anniversary as a, a tour guide service licensed by the state of Florida. He teaches a, a Tampa Black History class, lectures on local black history for several organizations in Central Florida. In 2007, he authored his first book entitled, Getting It Done, Rebuilding Black America, Brick by Brick. He was a city's history consultant for the construction of Tampa's Perry Harvey Park. And I, I just want to inform you that he presented his own vision for the redevelopment of that area uh, some 15 years ago. He led efforts that resulted in the construction of the 78th Street Community Library and the Robert W. w. Saunders Public Library and African American Culture Center. He also led the effort to rebuild his high school, George S. Middleton. Because of his involvement and negotiating skills, the school was fast-tracked and completed in 2002 instead of the projected date of 2015. Quite a feat. Currently, he is a consultant for the West Tampa Community Redevelopment Area and serves as a program manager for the Community and Law Enforcement Workshops and Services Program. Last month, he was recognized as a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. community hero. Also last month, he led a very successful initiative to get a school renamed for the father of black history, Carter G. Woodson. Awesome timing and national implications. He is a member of the Pi Iota chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, the Tampa Bay chapter of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, ASALA, and Allen Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church. He is the father of four adult children and five grandchildren. My former colleague, my friend, your speaker, Charles Fred Hearns. Lord, Lord, why did you make me black? Why did you make me someone the world wants to hold back? Why did you give me thick lips, a broad nose, and kinky hair? Why did you make me someone who receives the hatred stare? Why do people think I'm useless? How come I feel so used? Why do some people see my skin and think that I should be abused. Black is what people are listed when others want to keep them away. Black is the color of shadows cast. Black is the end of the day. God answers. Why did I make you black? Why did I make you black? You are the color of midnight sky. I put the stars glitter in your eyes. I made you the color of coal from which beautiful diamonds are formed. I made you the color of oil, the black gold that keeps people warm. Your stature is strong, your bone structure thick to withstand the burdens of time. The reflection you see in the mirror, the image looking back at you, aha, uh -huh, is mine. Good morning, Tampa. Good morning. Happy Black History Month. I would like to take credit for that poem, but it's not mine. <laughs> it was written by an African-American poet, Runette Nia Ebo. And that's only a portion of it. I didn't read the whole thing. But I wanted to give you a taste of what it's like to be an African-American here 
in this country. I want to thank Mayor Buckhorn, Celeste Gibbons Peoples, President of the City of Tampa Black History Committee, all of the committee members, my friend Bobby L. Bowden. I'll tell you, working for your best friend for 30 years is really not working. That's the relationship Bobby and I had. I'd like to pay tribute to the former presidents of the city's Black History Committee, the late Jeanette Martin, Ms. Betty Green Johnson, Frank Crum, and all of you who are here today. I want to thank my role models, starting with my parents, Samuel Hearns, who's 90 years old and in better shape than I am, <laughs> living in Broward County, and my mother, Grace Tillman Clark. My role model, C. Blythe Andrews, Jr., C. Blythe Andrews, Sr., George Davis, Charles I. Goosby Jones, and most of all, Alton White. And I know Big Al is here with us today looking down with a big smile. He was a friend of this city for many, many years, for his entire life. Our theme, as you know, is reflecting on our past, moving towards the future. So I'm going to do two things today. First of all, give you a little of the history of how the City of Tampa Black History Committee got started. And then I want to hopefully inspire you so that you can make yourself a committee of one and not be limited, city employees, to your job description. Don't be limited by what you get paid to do. You know, there are 24 hours in every day. So if you work eight hours, and sleep eight hours, there are eight more hours. If you spend half that time with your family, helping with homework, watching television, eating meals, what have you, you've still got four more hours. And if you only spend half that time, that's two hours a day, Monday through Friday, 10 hours a week, that we all should be spending doing something to make this a better community. I began focusing on learning as much as I could about the history of Tampa as Mr. Bowden mentioned, near the time that I retired from the city. And I started telling my coworkers and folk that I work with, you know, I think I'm gonna retire and start doing history tours. And they said, you're leaving to do what? You can't make any money doing that. Are you crazy? Now, nobody actually said that to my face, but I know that's what a lot of people were probably thinking. But I'm happy to announce this is my 11th year of Fred Hearn's tours, and we're still going strong. As was mentioned last week, the Hillsborough County School Board voted to rename the Dr. Carter G. Woodson School in North Tampa. It was a unanimous vote. Now that in itself is history. Again, I want to pay tribute to Ms. Schamberger and the members of the school board for taking that bold step. Carter G. Woodson is the father of black history. He's the reason we have Black History Month, and it's high time we started celebrating his life and achievements and accomplishments. Thank you, Dr. Woodson. For those of you who may not know, the reason we celebrate Black History Month in February is because the second week in February contains the birthdays of two outstanding Americans, Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. So in 1926, when Dr. Carter G. Woodson came up with the idea of celebrating Negro History Week, he was honoring a black American and a white American. So when we celebrate Black History Month in February, we're celebrate, celebrating everybody who contributed to equality in this country. <laughs> Dr. Woodson said, those, those who have no history of what their forebearers have accomplished lose the inspiration which comes from the teaching of biography and history. If we don't learn our true history, we're going to be left with his story. So why is history so important to us? To me, history is just another word for experience. Ask yourself this question. Would you want to hire someone with no experience to do a very important job? I don't think so. You want them to have some history. You want them to have some prior knowledge. That's why history is so important. It's instructive. We also need to look at some of the things that uh, we should do when we look at how 
our history brought us to this point with this program. December 13, 1986, Tampa baseball legend Dwight Gooden, 22-year-old star pitcher for the New York Mets, native of East Tampa, was involved in a traffic violation and a skirmish with Tampa Police Department officers. Dwight and two of those officers wound up going to Tampa General Hospital that night to be treated for injuries. Black, uh, Dwight left with a bruised face and a black eye, and pictures of Dwight's face were spread all over newspapers and TV sets from Tampa to New York. There were also stories of Dwight being handcuffed and hogtied, and that was a topic in barbershops and beauty shops for a long time in Tampa, especially in East Tampa. Now, three months later, on February 18, 1987, which happened to be Black History Month, a 23-year-old young man who lived in College Hill named Melvin Hare was at a celebration with his family. Melvin got a little out of hand. Someone called the police to calm him down. Melvin wound up losing his life that day when the officers responded. Now, the officers were found not guilty of violating his rights, and they were cleared of all charges. But that announcement came at right about the same time we had the other incident with Melvin Hare, Dwight Gooden, all of this came together at once. So you had the verdict being announced, you had Melvin, lose, Melvin losing his life one day apart. Bad, bad timing. So we had three nights and four days of violence in College Hill, the likes of which we've never seen before and we haven't seen since that time. May I buck on you were there at that time and you remember those days, how we walked up and down the streets talking to people trying to calm folk down. Just before that, in 1985, State Representative James Hargret began putting together a proposal that moved through the state legislature to make the teaching of African American history uh, prominent throughout the state of Florida and all of our public schools. It only took 30 years for that to happen. But Bobby Bowden didn't wait. As you know, Bobby went to Mayor Friedman and said, Mayor, I think we need to form a Black History Committee, have a Black History Month program every February, and we need to open it up to the public. So with that first program, February 1988, Otis Anthony was the first speaker. There were about 50 people at that program, about the first five rows of this middle section. And it was held in city council chambers. Were any of you there? Okay. We have a few people who were there. So you remember, you can appreciate how we've grown. The original committee members were Chairman Bobby L. Bowden, Otis Anthony, Barbara Walter Shields, Rosie Peterman, Pamela Hart, Bob McInnes, Claire Cardina, Everett Bass, and of course, Jeanette Martin. And is Marvin, her husband here? There's Marvin Martin. Please give him a hand. Stand up, Marvin. Let's look at what some of our ancestors had to say. James Weldon Johnson, who by the way formed the Tampa branch of NAACP back in 1917, encouraged us to lift every voice and sing. He told us that we were young, gifted, and black. A. Philip Randolph, who was a friend of Perry Harvey, Perry Harvey Sr., said famously at the banquet table of life, you get what you can take, and you keep what you can hold. That was one of the favorite quotations of Perry Harvey Jr. Let's also look at what Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune had to say. Dr. Bethune, for many years, was vice president of Tampa's Central Industrial Insurance Company. She spent a lot of time here in Tampa. Did you know she had a militant side to her personality? She said in her last will and testament, protests openly everything that smacks of discrimination or slander. Now, Marcus Garvey didn't say that. That wasn't Malcolm X. That was Dr. Bethune. And all together now, Reverend Jesse Jackson said, I am somebody. Much of our popular music used to do the same. It used to inspire us. Someone who you may not often think of as being inspirational, Sylvester Stewart, who we all know as Sly of Sly and the Family Stone, told us to stand. 
There's a cross for you to bear, things to go through if you're going anywhere. And my favorite line, stand, don't you know that you are free? Well, at least in your mind, if you want to be. Let's see if you remember the words of these popular songs. Teddy Pendergrass told us to wake up, everybody. The world won't get no better if we just let it be. We've got to change it, yeah, just you and me. Curtis Mayfield, we've got to keep on pushing. Michael Jackson said, I've got to face the man in the mirror in order to make that change. The staple single said, respect yourself. The queen of soul, Aretha Franklin, did a record that Otis Redinger did originally. She made this record her own when she said you need to have R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. And the godfather, James Brown, spent a lot of time in Tampa on Central Avenue at the Fort Home Hesley Armory. By the way, Moses White financed James Brown's first record. That wasn't in the movie, but you're hearing it here. That was Moses White. He said to seize the future, we, not, we need not manpower, but soul power. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Open up the door, I'll get it myself. He said, stop talking loud and saying nothing. People, people, we got to get over before we go under. Don't get on the bad foot, get on the good foot. And if you do these things, you won't say, I feel bad, you'll say, I feel good. And finally, in 1969, James Brown gave us an anthem. Yes, he did. I even heard white people saying this. <laughs> Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. It only takes a handful of people to change this world. Just look at some of the projects here in Tampa, and you heard about some of these earlier. The reestablishment of Middleton and Blake High School. The Encore Project, which is still ongoing giving celebration to people like Ella Fitzgerald and Ray Charles, the Robert W. Saunders Public Library African American Cultural Arts Center, the nine African Americans who are now on our river walk, that fabulous Tampa river walk, nine African Americans celebrated in bronze statues, the Perry Harvey Senior Park, the award-winning Perry Harvey Senior Park, and also the encore projects that pay tribute to Essie Mae Reed and Martin Chambers. We have to trust each other, work together, and love one another, and we can get all kinds of things accomplished. I'll tell you one brief story before I take my seat. It was an 11-year struggle to get Middleton High School reestablished, to get the school district to agree to spend $40 million to build a new high school in East Tampa. The Alumni Association kept on pounding that rock as uh, the Buccaneers used to say, John Gruden. Pound the rock, pound the rock. We kept pounding that rock at several school board meetings. And I realized after a while, I was starting to get on people's nerves. But I thought about something Ike Tribble said at one of these programs, one of our early Black History Committee programs. He quoted an African proverb when he said, tall trees catch much wind. If you're gonna be a tall tree, prepare for the wind. And some days I caught a hurricane. <laughs> One day I was summoned to a man's office. I'll call him Mr. X. I went to his office. I didn't know what he wanted to talk about. And he immediately started talking about Middleton High School. And he said, you know, uh, I know you've been spending a lot of time down the school board. And I know Bobby Bowden. He wanted to let me know that he knew my boss. And the implication was if I didn't back up and go easy on the school board, he was going to make trouble for me. I didn't have the heart to tell him that Bobby was chairman of our alumni wall committee. <laughs> you know what? Every person in this room can do something better than anybody else you know. Use your gifts to help those who need it the most. And do it today. Don't put it off until tomorrow. If I can do it, you can do it. Make that change. God bless you.
Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Hearns definitely did what we thought he would do. He was going to tell it like it is. He's been a friend to C uh, to CLTBHC for years. He was part. He was when we became 501c3. He was at, when that was our first executive board. He was our advisor for our first executive board. And Fred, we just want to say thank you, and we just want to give you a, a little token of our appreciation for always being true, for making sure we never forget who we are, where we are, and where we're going. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dear. Thank you again, Mr. Hearns, for all your wonderful words. And now we're going to ask Bridget Gordon with the COTBHC Vice President, who will come forward and give us words of thanks and uh, to the other uh, sponsors and the friends. And then we'll hear another selection from Mr. Cole. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Was that awesome or what? It was indeed. Let's give them another hand. Awesome. At this time, we would like to recognize all of our continuous sponsors um, that supported the City of Tampa Black History Committee. Would you please stand when I call your name, okay? Tampa Electric Company, Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay Federal Credit Union, Casper's Company, Heart, Columbia Restaurant, Rooms to Go, Milena Healthcare, Moffitt Cancer Center, Willibrators Technologies, Florida Sentinel Bulletin, Manny's on the Bay, State Farm Insurance, Wilson's Funeral Home, City of Tampa Television, Tampa Convention Center, Herbert Kinsey, Bobby L. Bowden, our very own, Marvin Martin Sr. and family, Gerald and Ophelia Helpner, Dan and Betty Johnson. Also, we would like to ask our own many city employees to stand to be recognized for their continuous contributions through the payroll deduction. Please stand. We would like to thank you, thank you, thank you for all your support. works is I play a sound and then it goes through the loop pedal and it keeps on playing over and over again. <laughs> and then I play on top of this. There you go. I love this. So this is my original song, Fall.
good I've always wanted to sit on a studio session I think I just did like he did the background he did the backup singing he did the beat he did the main I mean he did the whole thing that was awesome that was awesome all right let's uh welcome up uh President Celeste Gibbons Peoples with some uh remarks man that was I'm still in awe that was good man Wow, yeah. I, that's, I, I can't say nothing but wow. The, the talent that we have at these schools, and he's a, you know, a student at Howard W. Blake, it is, just, it is just awesome. I hope everyone's enjoying themselves this morning. On behalf of the City of Tampa Black History Committee, I want to present Mr. Carter with a little token of appreciation. Rod Carter has, has we've kind of made him an honorary member. Anytime we've, we've called on him, he's always been there for us to be the MC, to cover any type of stories that we will have, and 
He's also our January, Mr. January, in our last year's calendar, if you have that. He's our Mr. January 2018. So I just want to present him. We've pretty much given him everything we could possibly give an MC, but we, he always has our heart. He will always have that. He can never take that away. But this is just a little appreciation to you to tell you thank you. Thank you. Did y'all like James Cole? Yeah. He, re he reminds me, he put me in the mind of B.K. Jackson. B.K. Jackson was also out of Blake. He was also one of our scholarship recipients, and we all know where B.K. Jackson is now. So I'm looking at James Cole to be following in that same direction. Paulette, I want to thank you for sharing your gifts with us this morning, a Pavan, thank you. Pevane, excuse me. Thank you for once again sharing your gifts with the audience this morning as well. Mr. Hearns, just thank you. Thank you for being you and always being the person that you are and continuing to give us our history. And thank you for being our keynote. You are definitely a wealth of information. I must once again thank our sponsors, community partnerships for always supporting and standing us over the years. But if I want to take a moment when we were doing our introductions, we must definitely have to take and have them stand because they're the ones that protect us every day. Uh, rather, we're walking the streets, they're protecting us. They're our homes, and they go on fire, they're protecting us. And I have to make sure that I pay homage to our fire chief, Tom Ford. Please stand. And our newly elected police chief, Chief Dugan. Please stand. Thank you. Without our community sponsors, our community partnerships, and the different employees that do their, tax, their payroll deductions every year, we would not be able to have our scholarship program, our golf tournament, and other events that we have throughout the year. So I want to thank you, and we're forever grateful for you. I want to remind you that our scholarship applications start today. So please see Cedric McCray in the ballroom D for any applications. We have approximately about five scholarships that we want to give out, five top different scholarships. Our scholarship ceremony is scheduled for May 31st. This will be our 19th year of awarding scholarships. And as I said before, we've awarded approximately $185,000. The scholarships we award are to African American high school graduating seniors, as well as students that attend vocational and technical school. Because we must face it, college is not for everyone. But when you go to a vocational or technical school, that costs just as well. We've also had monies that we, we've given scholarships to students that are already in college that may face and do face some financial struggles. So we're blessed enough to be able to help them as well. This year, we've also partnered with the Mayor's African American Advisory Council in, their, in our scholarship efforts. They will be awarding a scholarship as well through our efforts. So please make sure you see Cedric McCray to get that information. Also, we're having our third annual golf tournament, and that will be held at Rogers Park Golf Course on April 28th. So please see Frank Woodard in the, the ballroom D as well. All proceeds from any events that we have goes towards our scholarships. So you can see some of the benefits that we have. Our scholarships have turned out attorneys, doctors, engineers, architects. I mean, we, we are definitely giving to the students that are working hard to further their education. But before I go, I must ask that all City of Tampa committee members, past and present, please be stand to be recognized. Without their hard work and dedication year round for the various programs we have had over the year, we would not be celebrating 30 years. Their volunteer work is done outside of their regular jobs for the city of Tampa. So please join me again in giving them a round of applause. Thank you. 
I want to thank you all for coming and celebrating with us. And if any of you are taking, you see we have a young lady that's going around um, taking pictures. She's also doing our social media feed. We're doing live feeds. So if you're taking pictures or doing any videos, if you can hashtag 30YOS for 30 years of service, then we can have all the pictures all in one site. So please, please continue to support us, to continue to pray for us, because there's more to come, a lot more to come. Prayerfully, there'll be 30 more years. I won't be here, but there'll be 30 more years. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful uh, morning and now afternoon, an exciting day of celebration. If I could have just a point of small privilege and shameless plug time. You know, I'm gonna ask y'all to watch Channel 8, right? <laughs> um, today at 5.30, I have a wonderful story on, uh, it's a, t a hidden history of African Americans throughout this country. This one is on a couple out of Florida. I know if I said the name, he'd know exactly who they were, but they were one of the first civil rights couples to be killed. That's, uh, that's called a tease in our business, so you have to watch at 5.30 if you wanna see the whole thing. And then on the 24th of uh, February, we have a 30-minute special called Hidden History, so I, I hope that you all will join us on Saturday evening for that as well. And of course, you know, any other time you see me on TV, just, you know, <laughs> help me stay employed. I would appreciate that. Before we close the program, please welcome to the stage Ms. Pavane Scott. She's a child care educator, a dancer, an actress, hip-hop dance instructor, member of the City of Tampa Charter of Review and Commission Board. She basically does everything. And if you would, just join us as we stand to sing, uh, lift every voice and sing. Again, thank you all so much for being here. If you refer to the back of your program, we will be singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the hope that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over a way that where tears have been water. We have come 
come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast God of our weary years God of our silent tears Thou who has brought us thus far on the way Thou who has by Thy might led us into Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God, true to our name.